Hi, my name is Matthew, aka EasyBot. Welcome to another episode of Electron Talk. This is episode 26, and we are going to make some modular beats from scratch with our best friend, the Octatrack. And we have the OP1 field over here, which I just always kind of have as auxiliary flavors because it can just do that for us. So let's switch back over here. Sorry about the lack of audio for a second. Everything should be up and running now. Hi, everybody, and welcome. What we're looking at today is, well, for one, we're gonna talk about this Mandrake. So this is a new module that I got in my system, and I've paired it with uh, the Arcane, which is a dual voltage processor. It's really just a bipolar VCA or a four quadrant VCA. In other words, it can do sidechain ducking. And what I like about it, paired with the Mandrake, is that the Mandrake has an envelope output. So you can actually really hear this very clearly when I play this again. So I have Loquelic Iteritus going into this VCA here, and it's ducking the kick. I can really like cut it out quite a bit. So you can really hear it. Now it's like, it's cut the kick so much you can, or it's cut the bass line so much that you can't even hear it, but. But I love sidechain. I like, I love that function, musically speaking, and I like it when the, when a modular system can do it decently. I know that we have like the kick all by poly or by Nobula. I do have the poly cinematic in here and we will be playing with that too. And the kick all kind of has that built into it. So a lot of like DJ effect style stuff is all making its way into the modular systems more and more and more. And I think it's great. I think it's a great thing. It's much more um, usable than just like randomly patching because so many people have gotten into modular and have had a hard time like getting a grip on it because they are coming from from nowhere, coming from like, I don't know how to use any hardware electronic stuff, let alone patch cables and doing all this wild patching. And uh, adding these more DJ style or uh, DAW style effects like sidechain pumping and stuff like that into a modular system is inviting more people to get into modular and people will already kind of understand some of those functions um, and be able to do some more advanced styled um, how will I say it? Some more advanced automation or modulation without having to really understand as much about modular. The stuff that I have going on in my modular case right now is a lot of voices. There's not a ton of modulation sources going on, and that's partly because I don't need a ton of modulation sources in this case because these two right here, my nerd sequencer, which has as much modulation as I need built into it, and then I have, um, the Maestro by Acid Rain doing the other side of modulation. And that's it, that's all I really need. I do have some random sources I can get up here too. So yeah, I really like working in these like smaller skiffs like this. I know this isn't like a tiny skiff or anything. All these, all these uh, voices are they're kind of classics other than the Mandrake, which is a newer voice, so I wouldn't say it's a classic yet. I don't really know if it's a analog Kick or not, I was reading the manual, I didn't see that. The manual is really long, really well written. I'm so impressed with how the manual sound looks and reads, it's just really nice. But I honestly don't know. It sounds like an analog kick to me, but I think they would have mentioned that like in the beginning of the manual because that's like a feature to people in your rack is like, is it analog? It's analog, I want it. Um, that's actually something I wanna talk about today is, is it analog? I want it. I want to talk about Loquelic Iteritus running into an analog filter and how this is the super combo right here. Not Maybe not necessarily the A120 uh, by Dopefer, even though this is a really nice filter. This is a 24 dB resonant filter, and I honestly would be more enticed by it if it was not a resonant filter. I don't like resonant filters. Like, I'm not somebody who's going to use much like soup, like a lot of resonance. I'm very... Uh, sensitive to uh, to resonance. Let's put it that way. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of resonant filters. This filter does sound really good. 
Let's go over to it really quick. So this is low quality Iteridus, fully digital oscillator. I'm pretty sure it's a Daisy uh, CPU inside here running all of it. So uh, just straight up digital signals, but it's awesome. It doesn't have a lot of outputs, just has the one output. I wish I had more because it is a complex oscillator. What it is is a dual oscillator that's got all these built in uh, normalizations to just create the most wild tones. And uh, if I open up this filter, you can really hear that. And I've got it ducking, so let's just... Just listen to it. It has a lot of different modes, too. It's just such a really great sounding oscillator. But then, if you run it through an analog filter... You get uh, the best of both worlds. So you get incredibly complex oscillator shapes that have just a ton of harmonics, a lot of harmonics, let's just say that. They have a lot of harmonics, so there can be really wide sounds. But then you run it through an analog filter and you can round off all of those digital edges, right? So everything's in bits, so it's little squares. That's kind of like how I like to look at it, is digital sounds make uh, squared edges and analog sounds make rounded edges and they sound warmer and smoother. And so when I run a digital oscillator into an analog filter, I get the best of both worlds, just like the Novation Peak, for instance. Just like the Erica Sense Percons, for instance. Erica Sense Percons might as well just have a bunch of low-quality Iteritas and A120 filters, because it's a just four-track digital synthesizer with analog filters and a BBD delay. And that's a very expensive synthesizer, too. And uh, and that's what it is. It's just like this combo right here. Albeit, if you bought four of these and powered them, it would probably cost more than the Erica Sense Percons. But uh, anyhow, I really like this combo, and I find myself kind of always going back to digital oscillators. For one, they always stay in tune. Um, and two, you can get w wilder sounds. For me to get a really wild sound with an analog oscillator, it's gonna need to be something like the DPO by Make Noise, or just, um, the uh, Mind Phaser by Hex Inverter, or uh, what's the one by SSF that everybody really likes, the Through Zero Oscillator that they have. Those are the analog oscillators that are going to give you a really wide range of, of tones. Those are like the mainstream ones. Of course, there's a million oscillators that can do this, but those are like the mainstream oscillators that you're going to see in more people's cases, especially the DPO. Uh, and the SSF actually one, really really powerful. But what's great about Lequelic is that it's in a small form factor. You know, it's the same size as the Basilimus, as the Manus, as the Desmodus, and all the other Modus, Desmo, whatever stuff that noise engineering does. So you can fit a lot of them in a case. I do think it would be really cool to have a modular case that was purely noise engineering, because I think you could get really, really far doing that. I think that would be just a really powerful case. And I would have a ton of fun using it. Um, so how's everybody doing? Everybody chilling? Having a nice time? I also want to say thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this stream. This stream uh, and many other future streams will be sponsored by DistroKid, which is fantastic. So thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring this. And what we're going to do today to say thank you to them is I'm going to show off their mastering service. So we're going to take one of uh, one of these like weird tracks that I made with live coding in the Octatrack that is mixed down at about negative 16 dB. And we're going to run it through their mastering service, which is going to auto level it. And it's going to do some mastering tone features. And I've never tried it. So this will be my first time trying it. We're going to do it uh, live on the stream. So that should be cool. Be sure to check that out. So let's let's do some stuff. I have this like track that I've been kind of building on here. Like you heard that kick. And uh, the low quellic. But we have some other sounds. The 
NerdSeek also has two sample tracks and I am using those two sample tracks. Here's our hats. I thought my snare was on two. Or three. I think we have something going on with plats. We got like some kind of dub techno type stuff going on here. my performance template hooked up to it right now. I'm actually gonna close the performance template and we're just gonna go load up a blank project and start doing some, some actual sampling. We're gonna sample this and like keep using sounds and use these oscillators, use the Mandrake, use the Polycinematic, use the OP1, and just keep sampling and chopping until we have something usable. We do have the Octacam set up. Bada bing. So once I'm into the chopping side of things, we'll switch over to this cam and we can, uh, we'll do some chopping together. <laughs> the camera's just popping all over the place. I shut the door to my studio and it's like immediately getting quite warm in here. It's pretty incredible. Pretty incredible how warm it gets. <clears throat> all right, cool. So like I said, we have the OP1. Got a nice little OP1 patch going. Probably gonna play with the bow coder a little bit. It sounds so good. It's such a they really did upgrade it. Okay. So let's let's get out of the template. I can kind of just show you like what the template does with your modular system. So it's a it's a cool thing to pair together. Like if I bring these elements out. Um, let's just bring them all out. This one, it's a really loud. We'll just leave that one alone. And yeah, let's see, what's, bring that one, yeah, okay. So we'll just have the kick and the bass running. kind of get like a build up going and we'll bring in some other elements. We gotta do that again, because I'm forgetting what's on what track. Okay. Cinematic can sound a little thin sometimes. It's hard to like make it full sounding. 
I guess I could just bring this down an octave. Could be good to sequence that send on that on the clap here. So we could put that on a, which track is doing a clap? Track seven, I think. Or is it track eight? Yeah, it's track eight. So we could do a clap at the very last one, like a ascend here. I thought for sure I could use some sort of CV. I guess I can use uh, mod six and open that up and the clap is on. Clap is on five, so we patch into five. It's a pretty long patch cable for that. What's that, the right size? Okay. All right, patch into six. Patch in five from six, and then we go here on this track. You do it on the kick track, I guess. And just do it on the very last one and go mod, and we'll go modulate six. Mod six, okay. And just soak it in reverb. So that's, sh this should do it. Although I'm not sure if I hear it yet. Maybe it's not opening it up enough. Mod 6 is just sending stuff. Oh, is it on this one? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's going to the wrong one. It's not even going to work for us. Okay, we're gonna open up a new project and start from scratch. Project 3, 12, 2, 3. 3, 12, 2, 3, new project. Here we go. Sunday with the syntax for me, loving it paired with the octa so far. Right on. Chillin' Sundays, been jamming on sub 37 pretty much all day, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Very cool. Mike Cigara, what's going on? Brian Bites, how are ya? Tim. Yeah, that was too bad about the not being able to hear me for a second. Hope I didn't scare anyone away. All right, we're gonna sample the kick track. We could try, let's try sampling just like the whole thing real quick, and uh, we'll use a flex track because it, it definitely makes the most sense. We want Slice Sonics, I'm gonna chop this up. 
I'm going to sample it at the level at 127. I don't want to attenuate any of the audio. I just want to hear this the way it is. So when I listen back to the sample, it's going to sound exactly like this. That's the idea. So we're going to sample input C and D. And we'll just do four bars. We could sample eight bars. The way to sample quantized eight bars is kind of a pain in the ass. But you go to R length max, and then you make sure that you're on a per track uh, scale setting. Go to your master, set it to 128, um, and then go to your scale per track, set it to half, and then set this to 64. And then go into Rec 2 and set your quantized recording to the pattern length. And voila. Or you could also set it to, you know, 128. But pattern length should work. And so we should be able to trigger. We've got to get this sending clock and everything. And we need a... Do we want a through track? We don't need a through track. We'll just bring the audio in. works. All right, we'll sample it here. And so I want to make sure that my trig is on trig one, two, so I can turn this off, but it won't stop recording it until after it's gotten all, uh, all eight bars. There we go. That's how you record quantized eight bar loops on the ox drag. But it's pretty cool to get a quantized eight bar loop. So now there's not much going on in the pattern. So chopping up a quantized eight bar loop with like very few elements changing isn't gonna be that exciting. Um, but it might be okay. Let's, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a slice grid. We'll do 16 for now. Switch this to slices. And uh, we have slice on. It's supposed to be on the slice view. Turn off that side here. Cool. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta make sure we have our buffer selected. There's our slices. Oh, that's a good one. Slice 12, let's put that down. So let's go like this and just leave these on slice 12. Which I'll just copy this, make it easy. I don't want to hear that anymore because we sampled it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Copy the page, page copy. We'll just fill this up for now just so that we have some consistent sounds going on. After we do a little bit of this, we're going to jump back over the modular. I'm going to talk about the Mandrake and uh, go in on it a little bit. <laughs> but for now, let's play with this. Let's find another good slice. Slice seven, okay. Okay, I think it's the, we should go on the last slice. Go to seven. Actually, just go up here and go like this. the 
Señor. I, what, what I was doing over on the uh, nerd seek was I was I was giving myself a row in here that had no audio playing so that I could <laughs> use the modular without it triggering anything. So I didn't want to turn off the clock on the sequencer. Oh yeah, I don't have any scenes because we're not in my template. Let's see if there's another good slice in here. Slice 16. Let's see if we put that down here. Maybe pitch it down or something. No, that doesn't sound right. Actually, I don't think that that slice is going to really work. Let's try a different one. And then we'll let's turn on this delay. I think that's a good idea. Maybe not. Make a scene that kind of like makes this quiet. Whoops. Not looking at the right track here. Grab a top, throw something on top of this. We have from computer, no. Origin sound, drum loops, percussion. on and we'll play with this Slice four, I really like. Let's throw 
throw the spatializer on it. Get a dimension synth. And some vibrato, maybe? What is it? Tremolo that does that? Let's again listen to this. An easy thing to do with like trackers is that I can literally just copy, well, I can copy this whole thing and then paste it down here. And then we can go in and clone everything so that I can make a variation. So now we can add some something more interesting to it. Where are we? Okay, so we can go Oh, I like that little riff right there. So we'll copy that little section. Paste it here too. We got something a little more interesting.
we want a master track? If we do a master track, then we can build some effects for our modular. give your low pass filter scene too much resonance it'll sound gross or any resonance sometimes copy that paste that this into like a freeze delay. sounds. call it a top if it's not a top. I like that sound. this. Maybe we should change up that chord that plays.
cool. I feel like we got somewhere. I'm trying to build out a set with my Octatrack and my modular again. I like building those sets out. I haven't played with out live with my modular. I would like to, in a while, that is. And I want to play out with my modular again because it's kind of just been sitting in the corner. I have all these modules. I'm not doing anything with it. So <laughs> I figured today's the day to do that. Let's, uh, let's dive into this uh, Mandrake drum really quick. Let me zoom in for you. Zonk. And uh, make sure it's uh, you know in focus. Okay, so this is the Mandrake, and this is the Arcan. Really cool sounding drum. So you ha it has full proactive input. It has saturation for it. It uses a lot of saturation to achieve its sounds. This is your main pitch input here. And this is going to be your uh, transient sound. You can change the volume of it here, but and then the actual transient sound here. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, some WMD drums I played with. You have CV inputs for everything. I love that there's a nice big trig button. I take advantage of trig buttons on every module that has them because then I can just audition my sounds really easily. <clears throat> And then right here we have our pitch decay. So this is going to adjust how, uh, how much of the pitch envelope is there. Like the depth of it. Because this is the actual envelope shape and like how big the envelope is, but this is the depth of the uh, decay. And then the pitch mod. Get a really muted kick. Something a little punchier. And then of course, Got this crazy envelope you can do with it. And I do have the saturation turn up, and then this is the resonance, which is gonna make it really boomy. It has two different modes. It has a clean mode, which has got a high pass filter on it. So this is with the high pass filter without it. So if your mix is getting too muddy, you can pop that little clean switch. Take care of your mud. Take care of your mud. It also has an accent in, and when accent is on, um, by default, it's just going to apply the accent to your kicks, but if you have something patched in with accent turned on, it will be a quieter kick, and the accent will actually react to CV instead of uh, just being triggered. This is your audio output, which I really love that they have that. And then we have, of course, attenuators for all these uh, different modulations. And then we have um, the uh, pitch mod depth here. Listen to those kicks. There's some really good kicks in here. There we go. Whoa, that kick is. So this is a low pass filter. So the kick completely open. It has an envelope output. So I'm running the envelope output into the Arcane's uh, envelope input. And because it's a bipolar VCA, I'm inverting that envelope and um, ducking the audio. And that's creating the sidechain ducking here. So it's always letting my kick through. Mandrake is currently the only kick drum module I own anymore, and uh, I'm definitely gonna keep it. It's a really nice module, it's a really nice build, and it sounds great, and I love that it has this accompaniment with it here, which is a dual uh, 
bipolar VCA. So I'm actually using it as my VCA for the Loquelic Iteridus. So the Loquelic is going into the bottom VCA, going out into the filter, and then returning back into the top VCA where I'm using that pitch envelope or using that uh, kick envelope to duck it. So I think that's pretty great that that whole combo exists in this ecosystem. And I hope that Maelstrom comes out with some more modules. They've done a great job with these so far. I'm definitely pleased. I haven't picked up a percussion module in Eurorack in quite a while, and uh, this one does a pretty great job. And kicks are like, kicks are really hard to make sound unique. Like I always end up just going to samplers. Like I don't really, with my Syntact, I'm not really using it for drums very much because I feel like I don't really want the giant boomy drums that you get on the analog side of things. And the digital side, I'm, you know, it is what it is, but I'll, on my, Actually, on the FM drums, FM kicks are really nice. I do think FM kicks do a really great job. Maybe other people disagree with that. I think FM kicks are fantastic. That bass line is tight. It's a really simple concept for building bass lines like this. I think like if you just want to have a bass line that sounds good, have like a consistent note, unless you're making like for electronic music, like techno, it's mostly you want it to not use too many notes in your bass line, just use octaves instead of notes. So it's really the same note, of course, because it's an octave, but it's gonna give people that ear candy that they need, as opposed to actually having it be a new note, which is gonna create too much of a melody, which is gonna get too easy to get bored of quickly. So if you just keep it a consistent note with like maybe one or two variations in the note that you choose, with some octaves, you can achieve what you need to achieve in terms of having it feel a little spicier. So that's kind of what I've been doing with my electronic music bass lines. It's just octave up, octave down, octave up. Do I think what? Let me see here. Doug, do you think the Syntact still has value as an all-around box? You love it. I do. Yeah, why not? I think the Syntact is a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none kind of thing, where it's like, it's mastered being a jack of all trades is the best way. That's how I put it during a, a session today. And I think that I do agree with myself from previously today. Still, I still think that the Syntact is, can just do all the things. Basically, it can do chords a little bit. It can do analog synthesis. It can do digital synthesis. It can do FM. The only thing it can't do is sampling. It even has an effects track where you can do sidechain ducking. Like it just covers all the bases but there's not like one engine in it that is like incredibly deep or anything. Like d the deepest it gets is the dual VCO engine from the rhythm ported over to the Syntact is still probably the most complex sounds you can get from it. When you mix it with the two LFOs, two envelopes, and uh, the effects track, you can get pretty far on one of the engines. But my point is, Syntact is awesome, I love it. It's a part of my main workflow. I use it in all of my music. But uh, to answer your question, I guess the answer is yes. It's an all-around box. I think the Dig Attack really upped their game with, uh, with this update. And I'm excited to play with it more. I actually have this little uh, Boss um, amp, wireless Boss amp, that I have sitting on the desk, or had sitting on the desk, running into the Dig Attack. And I just turn the metronome on and play my guitar right into the Dig Attack because it has a line output. It does a great job with an amp emulation, and you can just chop it right in the dig attack now. I think that's pretty rad. That's something that required a lot more understanding to do on the Octatrack, more effort. On the dig attack, it's so easy. It has the threshold recording, so it's pretty great. But yeah, I just wanted to point out how, how cool the Mandrake is, how cool the Arcane is. It's nice to get a new module and like it. <laughs> That's always a good feeling. I get new stuff all the time and I'm like, eh. I picked up a Hydronium recently and I played with it for about 10 minutes before I put it away and I was like, eh. I still think my Erica since baseline sounds better. I was trying to get a Roland uh, 303 type sound. This was during that 303 time and I was just feeling like everyone else, feeling inspired to make some acid type sounds. And uh, I've wanted a Hydronium forever and one finally came up, picked it up. And maybe I need to I need to play with it again, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't enamored right away. What's up, Toby? Sup your butt? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's up, your butt? 
Uh, yeah. All right, let's do our little... Uh, let's master something in DistroKid. I've been wanting to try this, this thing out because it's like $100 a year. You get one free master. So I'm going to use my one free master with you guys. Hopefully you can hear my desktop audio when I switch it over because... We were having a little bit of audio issues a second ago. And I've been having some, like, OBS has been kind of weird lately. We'll find out. So we'll switch over. So just tell me if, uh, if you can still hear me. Hopefully you can. Right? You guys could hear me, I hope. <laughs> We're back over here. Where did my audio mixer go? There it is. Okay. Yeah, you guys can definitely hear me. Cool. Awesome. All right. So here we are at Mixia. This is the new thing that DistroKid has. And we're going to drop a track that I made with live coding. And so Orca and the Octatrack for one of our compilations that we did in the Discord. So I have the unmastered version. I have a version of it that's been mastered by a mastering engineer. And then I have the version that we're going to get from Mixia. So I'm going to hit play. Let me know if you guys can hear this. So it should be kind of quiet. I'm like skipping around in it. It's very experimental sound because I, I live coded it. Okay, you could hear it fine. So that's the volume that it's mixed at. I'm not going to adjust the volume. So Mixia is going to master this track. So I'm going to select, upload a track, and we're gonna drop a track. in here called enemy and here it goes <laughs> i'm very curious to see how this turns out uh, i really want it to work i really love DistroKid. they've i my, my buddy works there and they're sponsoring these streams so they're just awesome and they make distributing music distributing your music like something so easily achievable to all the platforms i don't even know how it all works they just make it work, <laughs> so I just love it. All right, while it's loading, we'll switch back over, over here. I'll let you know when it's done loading, and then we'll, we'll continue with our mastering. So I wanted to add some more sounds. So this is the Nerd Seek, uh, so you, if you guys can see it well enough. I've got this nice little color theme going on here. And what I did to expand it is if you hold shift and hit mark, you can just copy all your tracks. It works a lot like LSDJ, if you're familiar with LSDJ. If you're a Dirty Wave M8 user and you just think that that's the coolest way to work, you, there's an expander for this. I do have it. I don't have it hooked up now, obviously, but there's an expander to use a Sega Genesis controller, which I also have, so that you can control it just like you do your Dirty Wave M8 or a Game Boy for LSDJ, except for you're going to control your modular system with it. And... It's so cool, and it's so much fun to use. This is continues to be my favorite Eurorack sequencer I've ever purchased. I have the Metropolix, I have the Nerdseek, and I have the Metron. And those are the three modular sequencers I have, besides a CV to MIDI to CV converter and using like an electron box, which also does a really great job. But this sequencer continues to be the best one. I loaded a bunch of samples into it, so it can even play samples. It has FM synthesis built into it too. We could actually make a variation actually of something. Let's, which one has got the hi-hats in it? I think it's this. Yeah, so we have this variation here. We can highlight a section. Can load a new sample in. So there's all these samples that I have in it. Whoa. All 
I want another hat. That'll work. I do like that little break that we created. I'm gonna kill these two. Programming like this with your little, your little fingies like this can be you know, not the most fun thing to do. Nice. Nick Solars, what's up? Yeah, Nick, you know. I'm telling you, doing all these changes and everything in modular, like doing what I was just doing, like flipping faders. I know you can't see it completely because I'm, I'm not all zoomed out like I was. Here, I'll zoom back out for you. But doing those changes with the faders, like, let me give you an example here. Like, give this clap a bunch of uh, auxiliary send to the reverb. I did that all wrong. Let's do it again. All right. Bring this in slowly. Yeah. That was okay. Track is still uploading to District Kid. Let's 
make a new section. Copy these. We'll do triplets. How about that? Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. I do wrong. <laughs> what in God's name is happening? Okay. Holy Lord Almighty.
modulate this filter cut off.
change the length of this. We're still uploading the file to DistroKid. It's still happening. It's a forever file. Listen to that ringing out. Is that this reverb? It is. There's like this spot right on Desmodus Versio if you go a little too far. It's just like, it's just crazy. It just keeps regenning forever. Forever, regen forever. I really want this DistroKid mastering thing to be a little bit quicker than it is. Well, how's everybody doing? NerdSec is basically renoise and hardware. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's not a bad way of putting it. What model is the mechanical keyboard you're using? How are you using it without a computer? It's a wireless keyboard. And I don't know the name of the model. It's a Keychron. Keychron. They're expensive. It's a, you don't need to, I feel like it's just like a waste of money. Any wireless keyboard would have worked for me for the situation. Yeah, it's a really nice keyboard. If mastering is done too fast, isn't it just amateuring? <laughs> yeah, probably. But I guess that is, you know, it says uploading file, but you're right. It's probably creating all these versions of this mastering. I don't know how long it takes. Maybe we should Google it and find out. Let's switch. Let's ask Google. How long does mastering take on DistroKid? Oh, it takes several minutes. It's generating 15 different versions. That's so cool. Well, actually, I'm really pleased with that because now I'm going to have a ton of different options. Can't be too different from... From what? The SoundCloud one, maybe? Can't be too different from the way Ozone works? Yeah, probably not. Maybe they even collaborated with Ozone. I mean, who knows how they came up with their mastering service. Have you tried... Has anyone tried the SoundCloud mastering service? Because the mastering service on SoundCloud actually has, does a pretty decent job. Like if you were just mixing down at between minus 16 and minus 12 and throwing it on, uh, on the SoundCloud one, turns out pretty good. Like if you don't, you don't want to like over, overdo it too much, it'll kind of oversaturate on quite a few of them. I tried it a bunch just to see what it was like. And uh, when I was paying for that service, which I'm no longer doing, because SoundCloud is just, you know, it's a great place to store your music, but I don't, 
it's so hard to use it as a way for people to listen to music. I used to listen to a lot more SoundCloud than I do now, but DistroKid honestly just makes getting your music on all the platforms so easy that I've just ended up doing that now. Or at least that's my idea, is just keep doing that. This is such a solid Eurorack groove box. Shame for MW WMD though. The PM is still kind of unmatched. The performance mixer? Yeah. And I have the, the extra two sends for it. The performance mixer is pretty sensitive. You know what one of the issues is? Now that WMD is, is not ser in service right now, and I think they are still servicing some of their modules, but one of the problems is that uh, if this breaks, if this gets busted, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? It's like a thousand dollars for this right here. It's crazy. It's a lot of money for my for my Eurorack mixer. So I don't want it to break, and I feel like it's going to break at some point. I mean, everything does, right? And then what am I? And then I'm gonna be stuck. I'm gonna have to find a new mixer, or find someone who will fix it. And I'm not excited about that proposition. That's partly why I don't want to really use the Metron now because my Metron already was kind of broken. It had some like, it was broken like when I got it and I just kind of kept it that way. I was just, didn't want to deal with the hassle. So it was a very minor thing that was broken, but it's just the beginning of things that are going to continue to break. Not because WMD, but just because hardware, electronic music and smashing buttons with your fingers, you're bound to damage stuff. I have damage on my electron boxes. They're all slightly damaged to some degree. Uh, but Electron will service them, albeit incredibly slowly right now, from what I understand. Need a stereo Bifaco hex mix. That's probably what I'd end up doing. That or the Chaos Devices mixer, but that's really expensive for what you get. But it's supposed to have just great sound. The performance mixer is just per it's beautiful. It's perfect. The expansion modules that go with it are freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Oh yeah, you know what we forgot to do? Crack open a cold LaCroix. Sample that, which I'm a big fan of. It's just still cooking. It's still cooking up masters for us. Let's, uh, you know what we should try and do is maybe we can write something, need a stereo Bifaco hex mix. Oh yeah, I mean, why did that just pop up now? Because that is what you just said. There we go. Just discovered your dig attack needs servicing today. Yeah. That's a bummer. Getting your stuff serviced just sucks. You had that Pamplemousse LaCroix? No, it's not. It's, it's Lemoncello. Sponsor me, LaCroix. I've been asking you to sponsor me for years. Doing these streams. Drinking your drink. LaCroix. Sponsor me. I don't care. You don't have to give me money. Give me LaCroix. That's what I want. I want more LaCroix. I just want the flavorless. I don't even care if it has flavor. Just give me bubbles. Bubbles and cans. And that's, that'll make me so happy. Make me happy. They're never going to do it. Do you think LaCroix? LaCroix has... Somebody told me they once... Uh, LaCroix, LaCroix... I never really know how to say it. Someone told me once that they actually sent over a link to my stream that I was doing something similar to them to see if they would sponsor me, but we didn't hear back from them, so... Alas... Richard Braun flavorless LaCroix... LaCroix? 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 Tastes like TV static. That's not cool at all, dude because it's the best flavor that they make. Everything about flavorless LaCroix is the best. I can't think of a better flavor than no flavor when it comes to sparkling water. I get so, I'm gonna get sick of this limoncello before I'm even finished with it. I'm gonna be like, I don't want any more of this. I wish it was just bubbles. Maybe I should just suck on CO2 cans or something. Should we see how the OP1 sounds running through the Desmodus Versio while we're waiting? Because so we can do that.
Where's this coming in? That sounds really good. Let's try something else. Free ambient show. Sounds awesome. We're hearing the OP1 field being processed by Desmodus Versio. It's playing a piano sample with the tombola. You know what we could do? We could run it into Mimeophone and then into Desmodus? Should we try that? It does not like that. That sounds pretty nice.
Oh yeah, this is real nice. You know, we could sample this into the Octatrack. Make something out of it. Let's go to new bank. Bank two, pattern one. And uh, quantized pattern length. Record C and D. We'll just get four bars. I don't need any of that. Uh, I, I guess we can record it on track eight, whatever. We can record it on the master track, it's fine. No, 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 no. Save this recording. Yeah, I don't care what it is. Assign to a free static. Assign to static two. And there we go. Got that beautiful sound into the Octatrack, full stereo goodness. We know it's going to sound really good is if we pitch it down. Hey. Making a, a sidechain ducking effect. Thank you. 
but for whatever reason, it's uh, not re-triggering on this one, even though it should be. I could try that. No. Whoops. Why? Oh, filter depth. Whoops. That's why. Copy. It's supposed to be filter width. Yeah, there we go. Modular kick. Let's just stick with the this kick. We could have these like not be on that. Let's go like, and then go over here and go.
we're still mastering. Hello. We're still mastering. We are still. That turned out pretty cool. Loving this, more ambient vibes, yeah. Uh, explain what a static is. A static machine is a machine you can assign to a track in the Octatrack that will stream audio directly off the compact flash card, which can be whatever size you're willing to purchase. I have a 64 gigabyte card in here, so I could stream large files if I wanted. You could use this as a full-on turntable, like side A, side B, and have a bunch of tracks that you move through and crossfade between and beat match and all that, because this is designed to do that. The Octa track was supposed to be a pseudo DJ mixer slash uh, CDJ 
kind of experience. So you can stream full length tracks right off the compact flash card. And you could pretty much put your entire library on there. I don't think I have 64 gigabytes of music that I listen to. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, this turned out pretty cool. Thanks, Richard, and thanks, uh, Femto. So the reason I don't make this kind of music as much on stream is because this is what I naturally just make anyway. So I'm always I'm trying to push myself to make a kind of music that I don't normally make. That's like the modular techno stuff is stuff that I don't usually make for myself. This is the kind of stuff that is easy for me to come up with because I'm I hear melodies in my mind uh, more than I hear atonal sounds and textures. Trigger condition, one of two. Just play one of two. What did I tell you? Okay. What? Oh, are you cycling? Stupid. Okay, we're getting somewhere.
Why aren't I hearing that? Hmm. Track two. Oh. <laughs> Not hearing anything because there's nothing on that track. Is it this one that has it? Yeah. Track three. Let's make the envelope bigger. Uh, where's the effects for the envelope? Okay, envelope three, but... Oh, attack. Okay, okay. Decay, that's what we want. And we, we want all of it. We want sustain. Let's get a new envelope going. Envelope three, one shot from gate three. We want bigger sustain, long release. Actually, we want long attack. Whoops.
do a resample. Track eight. All right, check this out. We're gonna resample this and then slice it. All right, we got our resample. Save this recording. Oh wait, oh shit. No, oh, we'll save it in a second. What's on seven? Anything? What's on five? Oh, we don't care about this. Bye. You're out of the project. You're out of the... You're not fam anymore. All right, here we go. Save this recording. Assign to free static. Assign to five. Actually, let's go to a, a new pattern. All right, no more modular. Track five. Oh my God, per track. Yeah, let's go. Back over here. I hate how I have to do this every single time. Get your shit together, Octatrack. All right. All right, this is the resample. So this is four bars of what we had before. I'm gonna turn this into a slice track, turn loop off. We're gonna go in and slice it up. All right, let's get rid of that and we're gonna go. So much for zero crossings. Don't sound like zero crossings to me. Let's go like this. Try again. Seriously? This is awesome. God, I got lucky.
Yeah, I did. I randomized the slices and it gave me that fire. Actually, let's go back to pattern two. to the start. I guess I didn't know how long this mastering was going to take. <laughs> I really thought I was going to be able to show it to you, but I think our time is coming to an end because it's already been over two hours and so a really long time to stream. Um, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this. We're doing modular. We're doing Octatrack. We're doing OP1. We're resampling. We're slicing. We're playing with the Mandrake, which is awesome, and we like it a lot so far. Um, I really like the Arcane, this inverted VCA. I actually didn't have any bipolar VCAs, so I'm really stoked that I have the Mandrake and this bipolar VCA. I'll probably use this bipolar VCA, this guy, and probably all of my patches forever, because why not? Dual VCA, and I can use it for sidechain ducking. It's awesome, so. I, I might even like it even more than the kick drum just because I'll probably get more use out of it and like the kick drum I'll end up replacing with the sampler or something at some point I'll just because I move modules around there's some modules that you just never move around Do you know what I mean? Like there's some modules that just are always in the case like my quadrat is always in my case I just switched over quadrat always around. Why would I ever take this out? quad attenuator attenuverter um, or unipolar attenuator, attenuator, and it can be a multiple, and it can be a macro knob if you patch it right. Stuff like that, it's always gonna be around. VCAs can never have enough, right? So they say. I only have one, and it's enough, so maybe that's not entirely true. But, yeah, I'm stoked to, hey look, it's two of me. What's up? What would I do if there was two of me? I'd probably have to fight one. Fight him to the death. Beat it. Out of here. All right. My name is Matthew, a.k.a. EasyBot. <laughs> this has been Electron Talk, episode 26. Um, I had an agenda. I think I covered everything on my agenda. I wanted to talk about Mandrake. I wanted to talk about how awesome DistroKid is and for sponsoring these streams and their mastering service, which I will have to get back to you on next week. I'll share with you the results of my mastering, and uh, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. We talked about the 
the uh, Bipolar VCA Arcane, and Mandrake, the I have no idea if it's analog or digital kick. We talked about the Loquelic Iteratus and running it into an analog filter. That's the way to go. Digital Complex digital oscillator into an analog filter equals beautiful sounds. Processing those sounds with the Mimeophone and Desmodus Versio. Over here we have an FX8. You couldn't hear it, but that actually was processing plats, which we were just doing random shit with. We have the Maestro doing our modulation. Of course, the beautiful WMD Performance Mixer, which will have to be replaced at some point, hopefully not anytime soon. The gorgeous OP1 field being processed by Desmodus Versio and Mimeophone. And then all being sampled into the Octatrack, where we did some resampling. What a fun night, and we got this nice music. Turned out pretty good. Here's our other pattern coming up. Oof. This pattern's so good. Oh, that note. That last note that just hit. Oh, man. I got really lucky with that one. All right, yes, GG Bleeps. I will work on finishing this track. Everyone, thank you for hanging out, and uh, thank you for your support. These be beautiful, super amazingly slim patch cables. These are my cables, and they're just wonderful. So buy them and patch with them, because they're so slim. Just stop buying thick, patch cables and get the thin slim ones because they're so nice and they make patching so easy. Thank you for uh, the kind words, everybody, and I will see you, if all goes well, next Sunday at 7 o'clock for episode 27 and to check out our mastering. Blessings to you. Have fun with your Octatracks. Don't spend too much on your modular and go for a walk. Drink some water. Have a great night.